this is the um, current state of my PC build. I know it's very messy, um, but that's because it's still a work in progress. Um, from the original configuration of this case, I've removed the uh, little drive cage mounting platform that was there. And obviously I've removed the drive cages as well that were there and the drives had to go. And um, I've put in my uh, EVGA, no, Gigabyte Aorus water force 3090 there i've uh, also um uh i put up the two fans that came with it there on the inside nearest the uh, case frame and i've added two more fans there these are these fans arctic p12 uh for better airflow i've also added i don't know if you can see it it looks a bit dark down there just about see it another arctic p12 fan down at the bottom there so i've got three new fans all together i was a bit worried that the um, there's no way that i can think of and maybe somebody else can point me the way that i can hook up these two fans the two new arctic fans these ones to run at the same speed as these two because these are connected factory connected to the uh, graphics card and these uh, I could only connect to a motherboard header which is going to be tied to the um, whatever the case sp fan speed is I can obviously set a curve for that but I wouldn't be able to get it to match the um, <clears throat> the GPU speed or heat so anyway uh, I've uh, I was a bit worried about how that would work or if it would work or if it would make any sense or if it would do anything. Uh, but partly this is about uh, what happened. So what did actually occur was that it seemed to reduce the overall temperature in the case by about four degrees altogether. Um, four degrees centigrade, that is, uh, not Fahrenheit. Um, from a maximum GPU temperature of about 61 down to uh, about 56, 57, um, that sort of thing. Um, as a side effect, I ran the, um, once I just installed all of these fans and everything, I reran the um, uh, AI suite uh, software. I think that's from Asus. I could check that later. Uh, I'll put a subtitle with the, the details there. AI suite, automatic overclocking on the CPU unit. And it had been overclocked up to 5.1 gigahertz. It's a 10, 900K. But with the extra cooling, I presume it's because of that, um, it's now overclocked uh, automatically up to 5.3 gigahertz. So that's another result, an unexpected result possibly due to these extra fans. I don't want to say definitely, just in case there's some other factor involved. Um, also, of course, this lower temperature has allowed an increase in the GPU overclocking. I don't want to go into that in too much detail now because I'm still, still looking at it, still working on it, but it's uh, looking very promising um, for overclocking, yeah. The other thing though that I have discovered is uh, that there is a limit to what I can possibly do with this one card um, because I've been using the um, ADA or AIDA, or if you say that, 64 software and the GPU is reporting that its uh, performance is limited by the available power. So you can only, I think, uh, increase the power input on this card <clears throat> up to about 105% of whatever it is normally. And that doesn't seem to be enough to allow for too great an overclock uh, on this card. At least that's what Ada seems to be saying. 
So there possibly is a way around that. I, I see that on some other cards, there's a, there is a switch. to allow a higher overclock. And obviously I could do some physical changes to the card to make it uh, take in more power, but um, I don't know if I'd be bothered with that. Anyway, that's just to let you know that we may be limited, not by the actual construction of the card, but by this power thing. And partly that might be because the, the memory chips uh, on the back of the card there, they seem to get quite hot. compared to the rest of the card, but maybe with this extra cooling, eh, the, it isn't such a problem as it, it seemed to be. Anyway, that's the current state of play. Hope you enjoyed that, and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll keep you in the picture, see what's happening next, see where we go from here. I'm gonna get another card for in there, another 3090. Will it be another water-cooled one? If I do, will it be another air-cooled one? etc. Okay, they'll be coming up next. And also what about the Peltier cooler that I was talking about? The ML360, it's not here yet, but there are some developments to do with this. This is a Corsair H100i V2, so it's an old cooler, which I took off the 6700K processor that I had in there. So is that enough for this 10900K? Anyway, that's another question I'm gonna be answering in the future. Alright, take care and uh, see you soon.